I'm going to give you 10 Christian YouTube channels that I recommend you avoid. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you 10 broad categories of channels and then within those categories I'm also going to give you some specific channels. There'll be a number of these that are predictable, expected, there'll be some that are unexpected and there will be some that get some people very angry. So number one is those channels that have an overemphasis on the supernatural. Everything is about supernatural experiences and not just supernatural experiences, but wacky, crazy, unbiblical stuff. So I'm thinking Sid Roth and the types of people that come on his channel. Now, I believe that God can move in miraculous ways, but there is so much nonsense that goes on on, on this particular channel and channels like it. People that have uh, false prophecies, that, that have been proven to be false, false visions, uh, crazy, unbiblical things like uh, multiple visits to heaven, angel feathers falling from the sky, complete nonsense like that. Nothing to do with sound doctrine, but just everything to do with just complete craziness. If you come across any of the people that promote any of this sort of stuff, stay away from them. The second channel is false prophecy channels. So these are the types of people that are always saying, God told me, God told me this, God told me that. Perfect example of this is Troy Black. God apparently told him everything about everything. Uh, God told him more than he, he, he told the prophets in the Bible. And the thing about Troy Black is, is that he's gotten things wrong so many times, as with many of these other false prophets. And what he says is that getting things wrong doesn't make you a false prophet, whereas the Bible is very clear about this. We see this in Deuteronomy 18.22. He also says that he's not a mouthpiece of God although he claims to be a prophet speaking on behalf of God. And he also says that he gets this impression inside of him, this inner impression, and he hears this, this voice and he discerns things from God. So basically he's talking out of his own imagination. This isn't the way that God spoke to prophets in the Bible. So I would strongly recommend that you stay away from these types of channels because they are very deceptive and they're leading a lot of people astray. Now the third one is sort of general prophetic messages or signs. So what these are, they're always positive messages, they're always very general and they appeal to a broad group of people. So it'll basically be seven signs that God is bringing this person into your life or five signs that this thing is about to happen. And what this does is it appeals to people who are desperate. It appeals to people who, who want a sign, who want some sort of validation outside of the Bible because maybe they're struggling. And rather than pointing these people to the Word of God and who God is and His promises, they're giving these generic signs which are absolutely meaningless and is, is basically just making things completely up. So the fourth group of channel is the hyper charismatic channels. So these are the types of channels that promote all sorts of false doctrines. So we'll see all sorts of nonsense like Christians being able to have demons and, and uh, demonic deliverance for Christians, uh, things like spiritual spouses, generational curses, slain in the spirit, all of this complete unbiblical nonsense. It's all experience based, it contradicts the Bible, and it actually keeps the believer in bondage. The types of people that I'm talking about here are Catherine Crick, someone who calls herself an apostle. If someone calls themselves an apostle, then you know they're false straight away because no, no apostles exist today in the sense that they did in, in the Bible times. Apostle can mean sent one, a missionary, but, but not the type of apostle as in the, the biblical times. Another one is Isaiah Saldivar, Vlad Savchuk, uh, people like Mike Singarelli, Alexander Pagani, Daniel Adams, all of these frauds stay away from them. Another one that's quite popular is David Hernandez and he's someone who says that his mentor is Benny Hinn. He endorses Benny Hinn, a known false prophet, a charlatan, a fraudster and he does some of the same practices as Benny Hinn, the, the, the sl slain in the spirit, knocking people over. It's all nonsense. Stay away from these people. Number five is free grace theology channels. So this sounds good, doesn't it? Free grace. Who doesn't believe in free grace? But what these people actually believe is in a cheap grace or a false grace. What they believe in is more akin to mental assent to the facts of the gospel rather than biblical faith. They believe that a person can pray a prayer once to, to put their trust in Jesus Christ 
and because they say you can't lose your salvation then that person can go on to do whatever they want they could go into what we would call full-blown apostasy uh, mock blaspheme god murder someone every day for the rest of their life and they're still on their way to heaven because they prayed the prayer once and they can't lose their salvation and anyone who speaks against this as a false conversion or anything like that is labeled as someone who's promoting a workspace salvation. They often say that people were trying to backload works into the gospel, whereas backloading is a financial term and it means you're actually paying towards something. Whereas what, what we would say is that when a person is born again, they're transformed. When a person is, is transformed, there will be a transformed life. To some degree, it's different for each person. It's not about sinless perfection, but a change of affection. And any of these works are not meritorious in salvation whatsoever. This is not backloading. This is just the pure gospel of grace of Jesus Christ. It's just like a cat. A cat meows because it's a cat. The meowing doesn't make it a cat. One particular channel that I would recommend avoiding is Honorato Diamante, uh, one of the more prominent people in this particular area. So the next category, number six, is the TikToker YouTube style videos. So these are YouTube shorts videos and these are people that they have all sorts of viral type clips and, and all of that that's going to go really big. But what they do is they use this emotional manipulation and it's actually really disgusting. What they'll say is that if you hate Jesus, scroll past this video. If you love the devil, um, scroll past this video. If you don't want to go to hell, watch this video, like and subscribe and leave a comment because they know that when you do that, when you watch it for longer, when you leave a comment, when you like, it promotes it in the algorithm and they get more views. It's really quite shameful. It's actually disgusting. And there are actually atheists that have done videos on these particular types of people. And it's very, very shameful. Uh, stay away from these channels and click away from them straight away. So number seven is the clickbait and sensational channels, overly sensationalized channels. So these channels can preach truth in them. What they'll often do is use clips from famous preachers and, and then also talk about other false preachers like your most famous ones at Joel Osteen and Joyce Myers, ones that are gonna get the most reach. All of it's done for virality. It's all sensationalism, crazy titles like um, they mocked God and then this happened or um, this should end their careers, or this is the craziest thing ever. It, there can be truth in these videos, but they're more distraction. They're more gossip than gospel. And you have to ask yourself the question, why are you watching them? Especially if you know these people are false teachers. If you don't, they might be able to benefit people. But even then, it just makes Christianity look really overly sensationalized and almost conspiracy theory-like. So... I would personally recommend staying away from these types of channels. I mean, good can come out of them. You can learn things from them. Uh, it, it is good to be informed about who the false teachers are, but don't be inundated. It's the same with celebrities as well. And this celebrity is doing that and doing this. If you're a Christian, a mature Christian, focus on the meat of the word of God. Don't worry about this entertainment and sensationalism, which is a distraction. It also makes people negative, critical. It creates a, sort of a, a toxic environment around the channel. And you don't want to get sucked into that. There are so many copycat channels that spring up with the same titles, the same thumbnail designs, because they know it makes money. These people get a ton of views. They make so much easy money. I would recommend you stay away from these channels personally if you know that these people are false already. So number eight is end times stuff. Stuff that is overly focused on end times. Now, eschatology is good. God puts that in the Bible. It's important for us to know. But people can become so obsessed with end times, with dates, with all of this stuff that it becomes a distraction. A distraction from actually living for Christ today. My end time uh, theology is very simple. It's simply be ready. Whether Jesus comes today or not in my lifetime, be ready because I'm going to stand before him one day. And this is what we should focus on. There's nothing wrong with learning things about eschatology and looking to prophecy. There's nothing wrong with that. But when someone becomes obsessed with this, it can be a massive distraction. Number nine are channels that they preach good theology in terms of the core doctrines of the faith. There's no heresy or anything like that. And some of their teaching can actually be really good. But these types of channels lack discernment and they're a bit wishy-washy and watered down. 
Um, you'll see that they bring people on their channel that are problematic or even have false doctrine. They share the platforms with people at events and conferences and even on their channel with these types of questionable people without actually outright denouncing them. Basically giving tacit approval and confusing people into thinking, well, maybe this person's all right, this person's all right when they're not. One of the biggest litmus tests for me in this regard is with The Chosen. Any show that has Dallas Jenkins on and is all friendly to him, um, not pointing out any of the controversies or the problems on and off screen and even promoting the show shows a lack of discernment. And these are not the types of people that I would want to be um, getting my spiritual food from. People can make mistakes, people can make judgments, um, errors of judgment, but when you see multiple things starting to add up, then it's time to turn off these channels and run. And some of these channels I've seen before that they start off good and then they can start to compromise more and more and um, it, it just ends up being just a complete lack of discernment and they actually lose credibility in the eyes of mature Christians. Now the last category is actually a very interesting one. It's not just about what you listen to, but about who you listen to. Because you can listen to someone who's saying all the right things, but if they have the wrong attitude, that can actually impact you as well. You can become like that type of person. Everyone has their own different types of personalities. They have different types of uh, genre or niche that they're focusing on, so they're gonna be a bit different in their presentation. But when someone is not displaying the fruit of the Spirit and they're acting contrary to that, then that becomes a problem. So these are 10 Christian YouTube channels, broad categories, as well as uh, some specific channels that I would recommend that Christians avoid. I'd love to get your thoughts. Let's continue the conversation in the comment section. Let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you soon. God bless you, friends.